In this short video, we're going to discuss some of the properties of the derivative. We have a new term, differentiable. What does differentiable mean? We say a function f of x is differentiable at a number a, provided that f prime of a exists. In other words, f of x is differentiable at a, provided that a belongs to the domain of f prime of x. Let's take a look at a very familiar function, the absolute value function. Let's find for what values of x is f of x equals the absolute value of x differentiable. Well, as we've done in the past, we're going to rewrite the absolute value function as a piecewise defined function. Recall that the absolute value of a number is just the same number if the number is greater than or equal to zero, but you have to change the sign if the number is negative. Now, when we write it that way, it should be very clear that at every number except for zero, that this absolute value function should be differentiable because on each of these branches, we just have a straight line, y equals x or y equals negative x. And a line has a constant rate of change. That's what we call its slope. And so the derivative of a linear function is just its slope. So for any value except for zero, it's clear that the absolute value of x is differentiable for all of those values. But what happens when x equals zero? Well, let's go back to the definition. But we're going to approach zero from the left and from the right. And we're going to go back and remember this alternative definition for the derivative. We could say that f prime at a is the limit as x approaches a of the quotient f this f of a all over x minus a. So here with f of x equals absolute value of x, then I would approach, take, find the right limit by taking the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the quotient absolute value of x minus absolute value of zero over x minus zero. Well, since x is to the right of zero, x is positive. So the absolute value of x is just x. And so I find that the limit value is going to be one. That makes sense. If I'm on the top branch where y equals x, the slope of the line y equals x is one. All right, if I approach from the left, well, if I'm to the left of zero, then x is negative. So I would have to change its sign when I take the absolute value and so the limit value is going to be negative one. Again, this makes sense because if I'm on the bottom branch in my piecewise defined function, I have y equals negative x and its slope is negative one. So since the limit from the left differs from the limit from the right, the limit does not exist. And so f of x is not differentiable when x equals zero. So we had a very familiar function. We knew that it was a continuous function for all real numbers, but it was not uh, a, a function which was differentiable at zero. So this example shows that just because a function is continuous at a number, it may not be differentiable at that number. However, if a function is differentiable at a number, it must be continuous there. So how can we tell if a function is not differentiable at a number x equals a? Well, we can look at its graph. If its graph has any type of discontinuity when x equals a, so if we has a jump, an asymptote, a hole in it, it's not differentiable.
if it has a sharp corner or a cusp at x equals a. So let's take these two cases separately. First, let's go ahead and look at cases where we have a sharp corner. So here's an example of a graph. Uh, it is a piecewise linear function and it has two sharp corners. So f of x is not going to be differentiable when x equals 1 and x equals 3 because we have those sharp corners. What is meant by a cusp? A cusp, you kind of think of a, a heart shape. So it comes, to, it comes down smoothly, not as a straight line, but with a curve. And then there's a different curve that meets it at a single point. So that's what we call a cusp. And you can see that at that point, if you're thinking in terms of the slope of the tangent line, this on the left branch, the slope is negative, And then we go uh, jump to having a positive slope. So in this case, uh, f of x is not differentiable at x equals 1 because we have the cusp there. And our last case, where the function may not be differentiable at a point, is if we have a vertical tangent line at that number. So uh, here's a familiar graph again. Here's the cube root function. And at uh, x equals 0, there is actually a vertical tangent line. So at, at x equals 0, f of x is not differentiable. And again, that makes sense. If your vertical, if your tangent line is vertical, recall that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Well, I hope you found this short video on the properties of derivatives useful.